Hi, I'm Suresh Venkat in conversation with Sandeepan Chattopadhyay, Chief Technology Officer of Just Dial. Sandeepan, Just Dial is a fascinating company. You were the search engine before search engines were invented. True. How did you make the transition from the old world of telephonic search to the new world? See, actually, you know, people talk about us making a transition, but we have always been focused only on one aspect, which is the users. So at the time when new internet didn't make sense in the consumer market, we didn't find it sensible to go on the internet. As we saw the critical mass forming, we had our strategy defined. Unlike other business, we didn't have to reinvent ourselves for the web or for so-called later on for the mobile part. We were very, very focused on what we catered to, which is based on the question, giving the right aspect. So the transition was very smooth, uh, as long as we knew that the critical mass is there to need that service and not us doing unwishful thinking and burning cash where we didn't need to. So the domain was booked in 97, but we started in 2007 because that's when internet users really started in India. I speak now as a Just Dial customer. One of the things that used to impress me about Just Dial when I used to still call and ask for directions on the phone was your ability to A, pick up the phone in zero rings. Mm -hmm. Earlier it was one ring, it was four rings, two rings, one rings. True. And the second was to know a fairly detailed profile about me, yep. the person answering the phone. What did that mean in the back end for you? So what it meant was really understanding our consumer, really understanding market demands and having the adequate amount of stuff. I mean, it's evident that if I'm getting a call picked up in zero rings, I have enough people to pick up calls that are coming in. So that just shows how well we could predict what's the kind of growth and what's the kind of volumes that we're going to get. Now, you juxtapose that with the intelligent software which can distribute that call to the right person at the right time. The zero ring is just a, like a consequence of that understanding. Uh, knowing your last habit and all, that's also again very evident if we are really <coughs> keeping data at the level of a CLI. So that I think the main thing that we did was we started equating a person to a phone number. And once we did that, uh, it, it was very, very easy. Now the reason we could do that was because the ecosystem supported us. Mobile phone penetration went way beyond landline penetration ever did and mobile phone was by virtue of its nature a one is to one correspondence. So the confusion that existed whether to do it, not to do it in a landline did not exist moment 90% of our callers became mobile. So it became a natural choice for us to go that way. What are the next big challenges for you in Just Dial? Again, following the user. So if you heard about what about the next thing that we are doing is search plus. So what does mean that what is what are the people ready to do after doing a search? So it could be that before they were calling us up for a restaurant number and they were happy with that because they didn't believe that internet could help them place an order. Now that the environment is ready, we feel for people believing that they can place an order to internet, let us enable that for the restaurants. It could be enabling for a, a doctor's appointment for a doctor or for ordering medicine from a grocery. So we are not looking at silos of verticals and that part. We are not looking at the content. We are looking at enabling local commerce for the end user. And for us, it's both the caller who is seeking information and trying to do the transaction as well as for the small and medium business who's someone who's enabling, who's been enabled by the technology that Jazdal is imparting for this part. So that's what we are doing. And that's what we'll keep on doing for every search that you do, whichever can have a next logical step. But the key is that we want to enable the consumer so much that this becomes the marketplace de facto for go-to for every SME and enabling the SME with the right amount of software. As Chief Technology Officer, how integrated are you into the business model? From the language that you're using, you seem to be well versed in the business itself. I ask this because in many companies, the tech departments are a bit of a silo, a bit of a kingdom, and the business process no. is slightly separate. No, not so in our case. It's a very framing link company, and you, if you hear my CEO or my CFO, you would think they're CTOs. Okay. And you may think that I'm a CMO or I'm a CFO. It, it really doesn't matter. All that matters is we get the business going. And we have grown this business together by making sure that we're able to leverage on all our specific skills and growing it together. So we look at it from the broad business angle. Technology is just a tool for us. So technology department by itself is not living in a fool's paradise hidden by its walls. It's very much part of the business. So if a software programmer is trying to write a software for the marketing guys, he actually goes on the marketing call to get the experience and then comes back and write. So we are very hands-on, down-to-earth guys. And I think one of the reasons why we are what we are is because we are very down-to-earth and we want to remain that way. You live in an industry where you never know where your next threat is coming from. True. Right? The mobile phone disrupted the market for alarm clocks. The router yeah. disrupted the market for... Uh, very true. Let's say airline face-to-face -face meetings. True. Uh, app is replacing the, the website, a, a threatening taxi companies. Absolutely. Where do you think your most unlikely threat is going to come? To me, uh, 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 
a big unknown factor for anyone in the world is what this what is this social you know social network angle going to be how is it going to really be in the flesh i think everyone's watching that and everyone is trying to build their own moats around it or everyone is trying to define their own level of social network to some extent everyone is into it but what form that will take probably will make a lot of businesses strengthen and a lot of businesses go out of business so i guess that's why we are like so social is the is does it keep you up at night or is it something that you just keep an eye out on i guess it's it's a easier problem now because it has always been social which has changed businesses and made businesses go out of thing okay. at least we have something to observe finitely now and we we are able to see it so it is not as blinded as we were let's say 20 years back without such a network existing sandeep my final question to you what is your personal tech obsession smart watches phones laptops what is the tech that you carry with you everywhere you go i'm getting big time to droids okay and i'm really liking the new robotics and all that are coming up Okay. I don't know how they are going to fit in, but in my big scheme of things, a companion gadget is probably going to be more um, trendy than a gadget you fish out of your pocket every two seconds. Okay, and this is going to be a gadget with some artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably Sorry. your your mobile phone is going to reside in that gadget. I don't know, but the fact that it it is non-intrusive till I want it to be is something I'm quite liking. Right. And probably so a companion gadget yeah. is what you're looking <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, for companion, free willing, independent gadget, if you call it, because this is also a companion gadget, your mobile phone and all. Sandeep and Chattopadhyay, thank you for talking to us. Thank you.